Good morning. Uh, my name is Trisha Powell Crane, and you are joining us on the Get Connected segment for the Alabama Way. Um, this morning we have with us Dr. Philip Cleveland, who is the Director of Career Tech and Workforce Development at the Alabama State Department of Education. He's joining us this morning to talk about the ACT Work Keys Assessment. It's not a new test, but it's new for our children in public school. First, let me say thank you for joining us this morning. I appreciate that. My pleasure. It's always good to, to be here and talk about the work at the State Department and inform the public. Absolutely. And, I, and this morning we have a good bit to talk about. Um, whenever you introduce a new test, there's a lot of confusion. Well, why, why do we have a new test? What's the new test about? And really, this one, um, I had a lot of questions, too, when I first heard that we were going to be uh, administering the work keys assessment. I thought, uh-oh, what's that? Who has to, how do you prep for that? How do you right. study for that? And what's the grade going to be? And really, none of that applies. So that's Correct. what makes this an interesting assessment. So um, let's get right in. So tell, right. tell me a little bit, what is the ACT work keys? Sure. We uh, chose the ACT Work Keys as, as one assessment tool. We administer it in uh, the senior year, starting this school year. All seniors in the state of Alabama take the assessment. Mm -hmm. That assessment is made up of three components, uh, okay. applied mathematics, uh, reading for information, and locating information. Okay. The students um, take that assessment, and what that assessment does is it really provides a, an overview of how they can take the knowledge that they've gained through their uh, their high school career, mm -hmm. uh, even re uh, reaching back to middle school, and how they take those, uh, the content they've learned, mm -hmm. and they apply that. So it's more than just memorizing for a test on Friday. Right. It's really about the application of the knowledge that you've gained. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's taking like, a, for locating information, mm -hmm. you're reading a chart and you're actually interpreting that chart and answering questions based on the information that you might find in that chart. Uh -huh. So it's really about the application of the knowledge that one has or does not have. Which is real world, Absolutely. which are which are the kinds of things that kids will do when they get out of high school, even working a job right out of high school, even in college. These skills right. are applicable to college going students. They um, are. Tell me this: uh, how how do children take the test? How do seniors take the test? Is it a paper and pencil test in some places, maybe computer in others? Or? Right. Can be either or. It can okay. be uh, paper, pencil, or uh, computerized. And uh, the assessments take approximately 40 to 50 minutes per assessment. Okay. And uh, those assessments are administered in a, a one day uh, period. Okay. Students can uh, take that assessment multiple times. The state um, actually funds one assessment at one administration so they can take Great. all three of those at one time um, free of charge and wow. then if they choose to take that again because maybe they're not pleased with their outcome mm -hmm. they can reassess at their at their own cost and the assessments build so for instance if a student scores great on applied math and mm -hmm. they may be struggling on locating information mm -hmm. then they can work on locating information uh, and then reassess and the scores will combine so their highest score okay. builds their their true outcome Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. So you're you're banking your score. I Absolutely. think is, is one of the yeah. one of the things, and and so the state is doing this. This is the first time that the State Department of Education has offered this test to students. I know it was adopted some time ago, but then right. we, we were sort of phasing in a bunch right. of new tests. We've talked about the ACT Aspire for grades three through eight mm -hmm. um, on, on this show before, and this is sort of that final piece because students take the ACT, the actual ACT, which mm -hmm. is like a college entrance exam, when they're juniors. Right. So this piece is given as a senior. Um, there's no grade attached, right? right? I mean, there are right. no consequences in yeah. school. This test is really for the student's benefit, right? Abs absolutely. The test, uh, as you mentioned, does not impact the student's graduation, does not impact the grade in a particular course. It really is giving students another um, artifact to put in their portfolio as they exit school. Um, okay. Students that are planning to further their education in a community college at a university mm -hmm. uh, within the state or outside the state mm -hmm. uh, can take these assessment scores and use them to build upon, mm -hmm. to improve, so that at 
all levels, students eventually are planning to transition to a career. That's the ultimate goal. Right. Whether you're participating right out of high school and you're credentialed mm -hmm. and you enter the workforce, that's mm -hmm. a great um, pathway. Or you plan to pursue further education at a community college, then eventually you're going to work. Mm -hmm. Or you may be working at the same time you're working on a degree mm -hmm. at the community college system. And then you maybe you're transitioning to the university. Uh, it still is very important. We found, and I've heard from university professors that so let's say an engineering student. Mm -hmm. They would love to see an engineering student that's been through some of our engineering programs mm -hmm. in high school because not only do they understand the theory side, they also understand how that theory applies. Right. And that's what WorkCues does, is it really helps a student to understand and be more informed. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of the um, questions that I have fielded are surrounding who is the work keys appropriate for. And I think people are under the misconception that this is sort of a, a blue collar work mm -hmm. assessment. Mm -hmm. um, but because, and I, and I can see where that could have entered into their thoughts because employers have been using this Yes. series of assessments mm -hmm. for years, right? Absolutely. And there are a lot more assessments than the three that the state offers. Right. And students may, or people may encounter those as they enter into mm -hmm. the workforce. They may find that they have to take a work keys assessment. Right. Um, in some other, uh, there, there, there are about nine or 10 of them, aren't right. there? Right, there are. Um, so, so this this test really is not a blue collar test. This mm -hmm. because this test is measuring skills, Absolutely. and everyone has skills, whether right. you're a blue collar or white collar or whatever field you choose. Um, I think it's very important for people to understand that. Absolutely. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that maybe we can. What what can you tell us about that? I mean, why? Sure. What can you assure us that this is not just another test right. for kids to take? Right. Um, and, and I think what could help is when if parents are able to see practice tests and mm -hmm. what the results look like. We'll talk sure. about those profiles in the next segment, but, right. but this is, um, what can you say about that? Uh, what I'd uh, really like to clear up about that is that, you know, the blue collar concept, mm -hmm. um, let's say with the ACT, uh, the college entrance exam, it provides an informational uh, piece to make sure a student's ready for college without the need for remediation. Right. With the ACT work keys, what happens with it is it allows students to see their ability level so that maybe they can enter the workforce with the primary uh, level of skills rather than going in with no skills. Mm -hmm. So a company mm -hmm. can use that to help really inform the possibility of success for an employee. Another thing that we found is that companies many times you'll see students that go to work and they're very successful and they stay with companies for a, a long period of time. They've really worked with that student to, to inform them and make sure that they're set up with the skill sets they need. Well the work keys helps to provide a foundation for that. Okay. And the student enters the workplace with that in their portfolio again. So mm -hmm. they're entering the, the uh, interview time mm -hmm. with that document. You're also gonna see a correlation between, if you look at ACT for instance, mm -hmm. a student may score extremely high on the ACT and they could potentially struggle on mm -hmm. ACT work keys. Because mm -hmm. if, if you're looking at ACT, it may be theory based, mm -hmm. where you can understand from a theoretical perspective, right. but if you don't understand how that theory applies, you may not do as well on the ACT work keys. Right. Because it's about taking the knowledge that you've gained and applying that in a real world environment. Uh, that's a lot of really good information. And in our next segment, I wanna talk to you, um, with you about um, how, what, what can one do with these results? You know, what Absolutely. do students do with the results? And a little more information about um, how important this really is. I mean, how this really is sort of a stepping stone into the next phase of a student's That's life. Right. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Open your heart. Open your home. 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 Become a foster or adoptive parent. To find out more about becoming a foster or adoptive parent, call 1-866-4AL-KIDS. Brought to you by the Alabama Department of Human Resources, Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. You fill up my senses Like a sleepy blue Ocean. You fill up my senses, come fill me again. 
Simple Minds on Ion Television. Positively entertaining. Welcome back. Uh, you've rejoined us here on Get Connected on the Alabama Way. Uh, I'm Tricia Crane, and our guest this morning is Dr. Philip Cleveland, who is the Director of Career Tech and Workforce Development at the State Department of Education. Dr. Cleveland has joined us to talk about the Work Keys Assessment. It's a new test, you know, assessment and test, same thing. Um, uh, it's a new test that is given to our high school seniors that really is going to help them uh, understand what skills they have. Uh, and these are real world skills. This is not sure. memorizing facts and tests and uh, that they're used to doing on tests. This is about applying what they've learned. And our first segment, we talked a little bit about what the Work Keys is about and why it came about. And now I want to talk a little bit about um, the scoring. We didn't talk about the nuts and bolts of what do these scores look like. We're familiar with the, the ACT. You get a 36 on the ACT. That's the highest score you can get. How are the ACT Work Keys assessments scored? Sure, there, you can score from a three to a seven okay. uh, on the different subtests. And again, just to reiterate, the students and seniors, this year's seniors will take applied math, locating information and reading for information, those okay. three subtests. So they have to score at least a, a minimum of a four okay. on all three subtests in order to, to be what uh, ACT Work Keys uh, demonstrates as being proficient for at least 65% of the careers, of the jobs mm -hmm. uh, in, in the state of Alabama. So wow. that will really, the four is kind of the baseline. Okay. So if a student has a three and a five and a four, mm -hmm. then they would still be at a level three. Okay. They have to okay. have a four on all three subtests in order to meet that 65% of the benchmark for 65% of the careers. Now, what does that mean? It really just says that a student, if they are there, that they can perform and be successful in up to 65% of the jobs. Doesn't mean that they can't work on their scores, True. improve their scores, uh, so that they can increase that. It doesn't mean that they can't or won't be successful. Mm -hmm. It means that the company wherever they're working, may have to do a little more work with them in a certain area. Mm -hmm. So it really gives the student, um, the employee, mm -hmm. the baseline information they need to know what they need to do to improve to be a better employee okay, uh, or to be more successful as they move down their pathway uh, in the college career. You know, locating information is critical oh, yes. uh, in a lot of different careers that right. require a two-year, a four-year degree or beyond. Mm -hmm. So it's really about connecting those dots. Well, and one of the things that I find fascinating um, when we first began talking about this, and you referred me to the profiles mm -hmm. that are available, uh, where each job, many, not every single job in the world, but many, right. many, many jobs have been profiled, which yes. means that I think you said some independent evaluators have right. gone in and they've profiled everything from um, I know I looked up what it would what skills I needed as a reporter right and it said that I would need to score a six mm -hmm. on the reading for information right. and I thought that makes sense right yeah, you know absolutely. do you need to be able to read for information to be able to help people mm -hmm. understand what you're reporting about but tell me a little bit about those profiles absolutely what happens with a profile is the company actually has a third party person come in and again it's company driven okay. industry driven so that that company brings in someone that's an outside person they look at a particular um, uh, operation or a particular job mm -hmm. and they say in order to be a machinist mm -hmm. you need to have these skill sets in applied math locating information and reading for information mm -hmm. at this level mm -hmm. in order to be successful in this particular career this particular job or position we have over 50 companies in the state of Alabama today that use profiling um, we wow. have a, one particular company in Tuscaloosa that they actually prof have profiled every one of their positions. So oh when a goodness. person comes to, um, to apply for a job in their company, mm -hmm. one of the first questions they ask is, have you taken the work keys? If you haven't, you mm -hmm. don't even meet the requirement to interview. Mm. So our students in the state of Alabama are leaving with that in their portfolio mm -hmm. and once that profile occurs then the company knows that hey if we hire someone that has this level 
of proficiency mm-hmm. based on work cues, they're much more likely to be successful. Their, their retention rate is going to improve. Mm-hmm. Their mm-hmm. ability to be successful and to be happy mm-hmm. on the job in that particular career is obviously going to improve. So because the student or the employee at that point, they're really in a position that connects and meets their ability level. So right. therefore they can be happier in their job. And we all know that being happy in a career is essential because we mm-hmm. spend more, work, more time at work than we do awake away from work. Right. So, you know, we're trying to really help Alabama students and their parents mm-hmm. locate what's necessary so that they can transition beyond high school to college and into the career world mm-hmm. and be very successful. So what you're telling me then is that students, when they take these work keys assessments, um, if they meet this minimum score of four mm-hmm. on these in these three areas, I, I saw where they really, they get a career readiness certificate. That's Isn't right. that correct? The it National is. Career Readiness Certificate mm-hmm. that they can take and share with their employer-to-be. Right. Um, I know that my own daughter in college, to enter into her college of education, the university required her to take a work keys Absolutely. test. And I don't, I didn't even ask which ones. This right. was a couple of years ago. Right. Um, so even the colleges are using these mm-hmm. work keys tests to see where the students stand, to see if they have these skills to right. move to the next level. Absolutely. Okay. The, the credential is portable. So let's mm-hmm. say you go from Mobile to Huntsville. Those work keys assessments or the measures that you take, the assessment would be the same. Mm-hmm. The profile is the key to the, to the indicator. Right. So the profile for a position in a company in Mobile may be different than the profile for the company in Huntsville because it's very specific to that particular company and that particular job. So yes, on the, on the website, on ACT Work Keys website, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it shows you a lot of profiling, mm-hmm. a lot of generic profiles, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that you can get a, a baseline for are you prepared to enter that particular career based mm-hmm. on your scores. It allows you then to be able to go out and do work to increase your scores so that you can, let's say for instance, you um, need to increase your score by two points. Okay. So you could go out and, and there's things online that you can do to improve your score. There's okay. paper material. Um, you can, um, I've never looked, but I'm sure you could go into like a, a bookstore mm-hmm. and purchase mm-hmm. material just as you can do for the ACT assessment right. to improve your score. Right. So it's really multiple ways. The curriculum that you're using, that we're using in our Alabama high schools, the college and career ready standards, mm-hmm. those standards are about application, not just theory. Mm-hmm. So that too will help a student be more successful on work keys because the, our standards are applied in nature. Right, right. Okay, so and to be clear, students don't receive a grade for these. That's right. This is really, this is almost like, um, uh, this is a gift really to students it to is. take with them uh, as they leave high school. Right. I like the way you said gift because we're funding this. So mm-hmm. now, just like we're funding ACT assessment itself, so now it doesn't matter your zip code, doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you're from rural or urban Alabama, it doesn't matter your parents' income level, all students leave high school mm-hmm. with both of those assessments in their portfolio that no one can take away from them. Right. It's there, it's state funded, so it really levelizes the playing field and equity is there so everyone has the same access. That is that is really wonderful because what we have said about the ACT is there are a lot of students who didn't take the ACT because they had either not planned to go to college or they didn't see college in their future. Right. And then when they took the ACT that was provided by the state, then that world opened up Absolutely. to them. And they said, oh my gosh, I qualify for scholarship mm-hmm. money or, you know, wow, I did a whole lot better than I thought I did. Right. And it's about... I see the ACT and the work keys then really as sort of laying a pathway, you know, maybe keeping, you know, swinging a new door open that maybe you hadn't thought about. Uh, And and it's important for parents to be involved in this, to look at these work keys assessment results Mm -hmm. with their children and say, you know, gosh, okay, well, what can you do with these skills, you know? Um, for the students who, let's say the students who aren't moving on to college, it may be that and they've decided they would rather work, right. you know, go straight into work. Right. Or maybe they want to go to a community college, right. right, And for two years and then figure out where they're going to, you know, right. where they going next. Mm-hmm. Maybe they right. want to be in some uh, technical training right. uh, where they can learn to, uh, a trade and make a lot of money. Right, absolutely. Uh, you know, um, that's, so, that's where the, the guidance and counseling 
component of this is so mm -hmm. important. We, we have got to do more in that area so that students are given uh, the opportunity to explore students and their parents. As right. you mentioned earlier, parents really drive what happens to these assessment results. Absolutely. Um, we provide the assessment free of charge so that every student has it. Then the parent can determine, do I want to give it to a college? Do I want my kids' results from work keys to be administered or given to a company? Exactly. The student and their parents determine what happens with those results. And I want you to hold that thought because that's where we were going to go next. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Hey there, Bob Baumhauer here. Last year, the Alabama State Park celebrated our 75th anniversary, but the fun really never ends. I'm happy because this year, special events and new promotions will help us reach out to those who have yet to visit a state park. In addition to providing family fun, our parks are located in some of the most beautiful parts of Alabama. So plan your next visit today. But this year, Reach out and bring a friend. For more information, call 1-800-ALLAPARK or go to allapark.com. Criminal Minds on ION Television. Positively entertaining. Welcome back. Um, we are joined today by, uh, with Philip Cleveland, Dr. Philip Cleveland from the State Department of Education. Dr. Cleveland is the Director of Career Tech and Workforce Development. And uh, we really appreciate you being here today. I'm learning an awful lot about the Work Keys Assessment. Right. Um, the Work Keys Assessment, we've been talking about this. Uh, the Work Keys is given to our high school seniors. And this uh, year was the first year that it had ever been given. So there's a lot of confusion about it, what it's about, why is it being given, are our children graded? And Dr. Cleveland has helped us dispel some of these mis misconceptions. Right. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about a few more now because right, right before the segment ended last time, um, we were talking about that it is a parent's choice and is a student's choice whether or not to share the results of the Work Keys assessment. I think some people have the idea uh, there's been some confusion around what is done with these results. Mm -hmm. Are these results handed to employers without our children's knowledge? And that is not the case. Right. So, so what does happen with these results? Let's say I'm graduating senior, I take the work keys, and I find out that I've done well. Mm -hmm. And that, oh gosh, I've done well in the three areas mm -hmm. of the subtest. And what do I get to do with that at this, at this point? Right. A student uh, can choose to go in and actually print, if they so mm -hmm. choose, a certificate uh, based on their, their level, their outcomes. And then that student can take that information uh, at their pleasure mm -hmm. and uh, use that as maybe as they interview for a job. Maybe they could use that as they go and fill out a, a scholarship application as, again, another mm -hmm. piece of their portfolio of what they've accomplished mm -hmm. during their high school uh, tenure. So it really helps uh, a student, gives them more information, gives their parents another piece of information mm -hmm. as maybe say they're competing for a scholarship. Again, mm -hmm. it's another indicator of what a student can or cannot do. So they can really use that at, at whatever level they choose to use it. Maybe they say, you know, I really am not interested in using this for anything. Mm -hmm. So they just don't mm -hmm. use it. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't give those assessment results to, say, a company may call and request. Uh, let me have all the students that scored 555 on mm -hmm. the three indicator test. Mm -hmm. We don't give that information out. Right. Again, it's very private. It's right. very succinct into each student. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's even your friend can't get to your results. Your mm -hmm. friend's parents can't get to your results. It's definitely very um, defined by what that student and their parents wants to do with it. Well, that's good to know because with the ACT, typically students are given an opportunity to share those results with the college. Right. Uh, or I think you can share it with up to three for no yes. cost. So we're, we're in that mindset of, okay, these are going to be shared with somebody besides mm -hmm. me. But the work keys is not that way. The work keys is shared only with the student. That's right. right. The student, again, decides what they want to have happen with those results. If a student wants to send it to a company, mm -hmm. the student can send it to the company, just right. like they can send their ACT score, because right. you don't have to send your ACT score to a college. You can mark none right. on your test. Mm -hmm. And when you mark the none, then it goes nowhere mm -hmm. unless you or your parents wants it sent there. 
That's exactly right. Well, and when, when we're talking about this, you know, this is the final piece, right? right? This is they're graduating from high school. They're walking across that stage. They've got this work key certificate in their um, portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, but all of this starts much earlier than that. Right. Uh, I mean, this is an assessment. This is sort of an end piece assessment of all that they've learned. Um, all the skills that they've learned how to use while they're in school. We were talking a little bit about um, some of this goes back to, you know, I, I can say when my children were entering high school, I had been told uh, long before they entered high school, think about the courses they're taking in middle right. school because those middle school courses prepare them for their high school courses, pre-AP or AP or an honors level class, something like that. But you have to start thinking about this kind of early. Right. And, and, and I, what I really like about knowing that this is at the end, you have to sort of think about these things as you go along. Right. You know, it's not just, oh, I'm going to school today. Right. And then, oh, I'm going to school tomorrow. It's more like, why am I going to school? Absolutely. What am I learning at school? Are these things interesting to me? Mm -hmm. um, am I going to, and I'm thinking from the student, and, and as a parent, I'm thinking, I want to ask my child, why are you going to school? Right. You know, Absolutely. what are you learning at school? And how is this going to help you later in life? Because right. that's what an education is supposed to do. Absolutely. Education has multiple reasons, right? right. Intellectual development. but you know, we have to work for a living. Absolutely. And so it, it will help us uh, determine that. What, what advice do you have for parents as they, you know, it, for the parents of the, of the elementary schoolers out right. here? You know, Absolutely. I mean, it's not too early even no. when you're in the third, fourth, fifth yeah. grade. Yeah. But what, what can you tell us about that? I would say that their relevance, um, the project-based learning, the opportunity for students to not just memorize for a mm -hmm. test on Friday, but to really understand what's being taught. So, you know, we started um, two years ago with students taking a course called Career Preparedness. It's okay. a graduation requirement that every student, by the conclusion of the ninth grade, they take a course, and within that course, they really start thinking about what, what courses do I need to take in order to become an engineer? It doesn't say that you must be an engineer mm -hmm. after you graduate high school, but it really helps you to chart out a path. Mm -hmm. So it tells you what math courses are necessary in order to be successful in a particular career. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I really like about that class is it really exposes you to things that you might not otherwise even know exist. Right. It helps parents to become informed about careers mm -hmm. and lets them know what it takes to get there. So it really is a, a, an introductory course that really explores careers, mm -hmm. connects kids to what they, and it informs kids and their parents about what's necessary to be successful. So that's really the foundation building block. We're gonna do a lot more with guidance and counseling mm -hmm. in the state of Alabama where, you know, we're gonna work back in our elementary schools to again, educate students and their parents, mm -hmm. get the parents more involved in the career That's exploration, good. career days mm -hmm. where parents come in, right. um, you know, and talk to kids about what they do as a career mm -hmm. and talk to kids within the school system mm -hmm. about this is a, a, a great career. I've enjoyed this. I've been doing this for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So really engaging parents more in the schools and letting them be part of that school environment. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Because we've said, we, we, we were talking earlier, parents don't know what they don't know. That's right. And if you've never had an engineer in your family, you may not know, you know, and your child has expressed some interest Absolutely. in being an engineer. I think what's really important about this, because I have heard from folks who are concerned that, oh, we're somehow tracking kids, that right. we're making them do this career plan when they're in the eighth grade and 13-year-olds shouldn't be, you know, figuring out what they want to do in the, in the eighth grade. And it's really not that at all. No. It's simply stimulating that thought process right. to say, because I know all three of mine have now graduated from high school, they're all in college, and they did have those thoughts along the way. They were right. part of schools where that was a part of the process. What do you want to be when you grow right. up? You know, right. some of us are still asking ourselves, <laughs> right? But you know, what do you want to, what, how are you going to use your interests and your abilities mm -hmm and now your skills, right. right? How are you going to contribute to the society right. that you're going to be in when Absolutely. you when you get out of high school or when you graduate from Absolutely. college? Absolutely. That, that, the great thing about it, when you use the word tracking, what we're trying to do is remove 
backtracking, mm -hmm. remove that even thought process because what happens with students today, ninth grade you go through, let's say health science, you mm -hmm. go through a health science program in the ninth grade, you determine this is really not something I have any interest right. in. Right. So then you change and you go into something in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. You may say, well, Philip, those are two completely opposite things. But until students explore and know things right. about careers, how can they make an informed decision? How can they work with their parents to inform their decisions when they really don't even know that those these careers exist? Okay. So really focusing on making education become real, mm -hmm. bringing it to life, mm -hmm. doing projects that connect the, the education, connecting math. Mm -hmm. Instead of just balancing a math equation, why don't right. you balance a medical equation? Wow. So that that learning really becomes relevant and it connects it to something that you're genuinely um, interested in. Mm -hmm. And then students stay engaged in school. They graduate mm -hmm. because they're engaged and they want to be there rather than exactly. just being told, you've got to be at school today. Exactly. That, you, you've just summed it all up so well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with us about Great. this Work Keys assessment. Absolutely. And um, all seniors will take it. Yes. All seniors will get their results, and all seniors will get to choose what they want to do with those That's results. Right. I really appreciate the work that you're doing, and I Thank really you. appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. And we're always willing to respond to questions at the State mm -hmm. Department of Education. Uh, go on our website, mm -hmm. phone the State Department. We're well, we welcome questions, concerns, and input, so feel free to, um, to call on us if, if we can respond better to your questions. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thanks for being with us.